You all know what time it is. Look what I got my hands on today. And let me tell you my dedication. I walked to FedEx in the rain to pick this up because my apartment building sometimes takes a while to let me know when I have a package. So I had it sent to FedEx so I would be notified ASAP. Walked my booty in the rain. Now my hair looks like this. But in terms of fixing it, we don't have time for that. We need to put this on our eyes. Before we do that, quick housekeeping. I applied for Sephora Squad again this year. Third time's charm, right? If you don't know what Sephora Squad is, it's basically an opportunity for a long-term contract and partnership with Sephora. So I'll be able to receive products that Sephora is promoting as well as Sephora ads, whatever, whatever. You guys know how much I love Sephora. And I want to say a huge thank you to those of you who have already wrote a testimonial for me. I have been reading all the ones that you guys have sent me as much as I can and I truly truly appreciate it if you have not yet I'm gonna put the link down below if you if you write me a testimonial sharing why you think I would be a good member of Sephora squad that is going to help my chances so I would truly truly appreciate it it will be in the description box down below don't want to talk about that too long because we have a business to take care of the pastel palette. It actually launched today everywhere. Sephora, Beautylish, Natasha Denona's website, all of that good stuff. This is her spring launch, and to be quite frank, I'm excited for it. I think it looks really, really fun. Do I think I am going to love it? Probably not, but maybe I will. I don't know, we will see. So this is $65. It is a midi size, which I am more than excited about because her last colorful palette was a Circle Local palette, and that was the $125 pan size, and it was like way too much product for the color. So I feel like she took our feedback and actually listened and put this in a $65 palette because this is a good way to get some pops of color without it being Natasha's most expensive price. Let's take a look at the packaging here. I'm actually going to turn the lights down just a little bit so that you can see the true colors. You will see that the palette is made in Italy and has a 24 month shelf life. So let's open her up. This is a true first impression. Okay, I'm too excited to <laughs> open it without you guys. But here is the component itself. Oh my gosh, it's so beautiful. I love this ombre fade. And you'll see the dots here that you can push a needle through to rearrange the shades as you wish in the palette. And da 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 da, here is the palette. Wait, let me look at it. Ooh, it's so pretty. Even if it's not a color story I probably would wear very often, I must say, it is very pleasing to the eyes. So I'm excited to swatch this. As you can see, there are 15 eyeshadows. Consistence in here, we have cream to powders, duo chromes, there's two of that, creamy mattes, and then we have some shimmers, some metallics. Good stuff, good stuff. Okay, we're just gonna swatch because we need to see how these colors perform because pastels can be a little dicey. So we're gonna see if Natasha can master that. We're gonna start off with the top row here. So we have Tool, which is a cream to powder. Then we have Illusion, which is a duochrome, and then Mint Frost, which is a sparkling metallic. Here's how they are looking on my fingers. <laughs> Look at the duochrome shade. It looks very, very fun. Let's see how they swatch. So the cream to powder seems a little sheer. Okay. We have a matte medium lilac in the cream to powder formula, and then a duochrome sparkling pink with golden champagne oh you guys know i'm living for this color <gasps> okay sign me up for dainty right here that looks stunning we have a mint pastel duochrome bright turquoise and gold lots of duochromes in here and then a coral pink with golden peach this isn't the strongest duochrome from what i'm seeing I don't think duochromes are Natasha's specialty or multi-chromes. Normally hers are pretty underwhelming to me. It looks so pretty though. Then we have a pastel peach, a matte pastel cornflower. Interesting way to describe the color. And then a metallic icy pastel yellow. I know that this one is in the Tropic Limoncello. So far the swatches are pretty nice, honestly. 
They're giving me decent pigment, nothing feels too powdery. And we have a duochrome lilac teal, interesting shift. A matte pastel sky blue and a matte pastel lime. So this one was pretty sheer. And I actually see that duochrome here. Again, more subtle, but still very pretty. Okay, we have one more shade. This is Feather, which is a pastel lavender pink. So let's see. Pretty sheer, not gonna lie. So I guess it does seem kind of mixed. We'll see how these apply to the eye. I think I'm gonna do two different looks on two different eyes since we have quite the array of color families here. But yeah, these are all of the shades in the pastel palette. But I would say across the board, seems pretty solid by swatch. If this color story looks a little overwhelming to you, feel free to rearrange these by color family. And I think that would be a little bit more intuitive of how to use the palette, like get the blues and greens on one side and the pinks and purples on the other side. And I think you might find it easier to create a color story. So in terms of the palettes that this reminded me of, I just wanna do some side-by-sides for you. Here is the Trio Chrome palette, and you can see the overall kind of more grungy tone that the Trio Chrome has. I think this might be better, yeah. Compared to the Pastel palette, I think these would be actually quite complementary of one another, especially when it comes to getting some depth in from the Pastel palette. I love the Trio Chrome palette. I think it's an underrated palette, but this seems almost more grungy when next to the Pastel. And then of course we have a good old Circle Loco. These two would definitely be great hand in hand using both of these at once because Circle Loco has the depth. I actually really loved Circle Loco as well. I had a lot of fun with it. I'm thinking I'm vibing with the more jewel tones in Circle Loco, but these are definitely family members. And then I did bring out Tropic. A lot of you guys thought they were similar and there are, I believe, three shades in Tropic or in the pastel palette. I'm not so bothered by that because Tropic's kind of old, if I'm being honest, and they haven't sold it for a few years now, so I'm not unhappy with that. Um, yeah, I can definitely see some similarities, but to me overall, they seem very different palettes. So we'll see. If you do have the Tropic palette, the repeat shades are gonna be Limoncello right here, Mint Frost, and I believe Bellini might be a repeat, but it's actually not in the Tropic palette. But I feel like I've heard that shade before from Natasha. I could be wrong. Let's get this on my eyes. <laughs> Let's give these pastels a fair chance. I'm going to use a brighter base. This is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Eye Primer. It's nice and bright, which I definitely recommend if you're planning on using pastels for the spring. This will make your life much easier. And if my brushes look a little dirty, uh, they totally are. I've been using them for way too long, but I'm using my Sigma Switch to get that powder off. Okay, I want to play with the blues because I feel like pastel blues can go very wrong and powdery very, very fast. So let's see. We have to use Brisk because this is a color that usually is terrible in other brands. And this is not overly powdery. Nothing out of the ordinary for Natasha Denona. And I normally hate using these kind of shades in the crease, but I just need to see the intensity of this. And actually it's more sheer. Oh no, that built up fast. I take it back. So you definitely have some build ability with this. We'll see how it wears once I mix in other colors. Okay, now we're gonna go into sky right here. And by the way, my looks, there's a large potential of it not turning out very cute. That's because it's more important to me to test out the shades than get a pretty look on my first go. But I will definitely churn out some beautiful looks and share the tutorials with you guys with this. Okay, I think you'll benefit from patting instead of swiping, but again, pretty good pigment on this as well. You can't go into a pastel palette thinking you're gonna get depth because you're not. <laughs> you're gonna need to dig into another palette to like pop a navy in the outer corner, for example. But in terms of pastel, I'm liking how it's behaving. Okay, and then I have to use a bubble right here because it's a cream to powder. And this kind of periwinkle shade is very difficult to find a good formulation of. And I find it very interesting that she used it in a cream to powder. So I'm gonna put it all over the lid, and that didn't show up. Let me try my finger. Okay, no, it is showing up, 
it just is like almost the same color as airy. Let me, so here's bubble and here's airy. Okay, yeah, so these two shades, you can see a subtle tone difference, but I couldn't tell a difference between the two because they look the same on the eyelid. So it just looks like I have one color on the eyelid. That's not very good. They're different formulations, but I almost prefer this shade in just the creamy matte. But this is what we're working with, that's fine. Let's start off with some of Mint Frost. I'm sure this is gonna be good. Yes, it is. In the inner corner, just using my finger. This is the typical really beautiful Natasha Denona shimmer formula if you're not familiar with it. It's just great, one of the best in the business and that's really all I can say about it. And it's placing beautifully over the matte shades. And then I wanna use some of Aquatic here. And let's place that right in the center. This has a little less shimmer. It's not quite as sparkly as Mint Frost, but it's really beautiful for a simple monochromatic blue eye. Like this right here with that hint of green from Aquatic. Really pretty, really light. I don't know if this is like the most flattering eye look on me, but I like it. Let's build up the lower lash line. I'm gonna try a different family of colors just to play. I need to, need to, need to test Zest right here. This is another creamy powder, is it? Yes, cream to powder. It's a little bit more powdery than her normal cream to powder formulation. I'm getting some kickback, which you no don't normally get with this formulation. But I feel like that's going to be nice because these shades can normally be quite unpigmented. And yeah, I mean, this is not out of character for a shade like this. I cannot name a palette where a shade like this had a huge pop to it. So you can see it is a little bit more sheer. You might have to use some assistance of a truly white base to get this to show up or even maybe like a mixing medium. It's not bad though, but just something th to note that it's truly like a light, light, light pastel shade. I do kind of like this lime green to blue down here. Do I want to add depth? Do I want to do anything? I think I'm gonna leave it like this. I like this. Let's move to the other eye. We're gonna play more so with the pinks and purples now. Okay, we're gonna start off with some of Feather and this is just the normal creamy matte. It's just like a lavender pink shade and this is nice all over the eyelid. I feel like if you put a darker shade in the crease and this all over the lid, it would be beautiful. I'm gonna leave the lid relatively empty though for this look. And then I want to see if there's a difference between Feather and Tool. So I'm now going to go into Tool, which is a cream to powder. Again, it has a little bit more fallout than I'm used to for a cream to powder from Natasha, but it's fine. And this is not as close to Feather as I thought. You can definitely see it's more of a true pink. So I'm happy about that, whereas Feather is a little bit more lilac. Certainly you can blend them together to look a little bit more familiar. They definitely aren't as close as Airy and Bubble are. I think it's still okay to have them in the same palette, but they still are kind of close, but it's not bad, it really isn't. I'm not mad about this one. Okay, so let's see how much depth we can add in with Bora. This is like the deepest shade in the palette. This is a Sonia G Worker Brush that I'm gonna use. Bora is also a cream to powder. She has a lot in this palette, so let's see. It's definitely not adding that much depth, if I'm being honest. It looks darker in the pan, than it does on the eyelid. It's mess free, but I was hoping it would give us just a little bit more. Like I know it's a passed out palette. I know that's what we signed up for. It would be nice just for a little bit more, you know? It is buildable though. Not too, too deep, but that did add a little bit of something something to the look. Okay, great. So that's fine. So I am going to start off with Illusion, which is the shade that caught my eye most in the promos. This is a duochrome, it's a sheer pink peach and I wanna see how it looks on my bare lid. So I'm just gonna pop this. Oh, that is so pretty, I feel like this could work well as a face highlight. And it has this like, not putty consistency, but it's definitely different than her normal shimmer formulation because it doesn't have any powder kickback. It's more creamy than anything. So it doesn't add too much of like a sparkly shimmer, which I was hoping that it would. It's similar to the Pat McGrath putty highlighters. They're not necessarily putty, but that texture, that feel, and the look on the skin that's very, very smooth and not powdery at all. That's how this looks. So we're gonna go in with Duet, which is another 
duochrome and it's a lilac and teal. So let's see. This shade does not give me as much oomph as I personally would like. You know, I wish it had a little bit more glimmers. Dainty, which is this corner shade right here, is going to give that to me. But I wanted to see how these two looked. And they're not as exciting for me. They're a little bit more subdued. And that's not to say that they're not pretty. But if anybody could do something really extra and glittery. I know Natasha has it in her. That's personally a preference though. You might not like when the shades are really glittery. And in that case this might be for you. But to me, for my review, for my opinion, it's just a bit on the subtle side. But the look is very pretty, no? For reviewers sake... Now that you've seen those two, we're going to go into Dainty, which is a really glittery, sparkly shade. And I'm just going to pop it right here in the center. And instantly that's adding the bob, the boom, and the glimmer that I want out of this look. Really pretty look though, I must say. So taking a look at the colors I have not yet given a chance, we're going to go into Limoncello, which is that shade that is already in the Tropic palette. And I'm just going to place this on the inner half. Of the lower lash line of my blue look. Very pretty. This is a very classic Natasha Denona formula. So it's really nice. I think you guys will like that. I think I've played with everything else except for Starlet and Bellini. And I don't think I need to. I think these two are good. These are very like normal Natasha Denona shades. So I know they're going to be beautiful. So I'm going to put more purple on my lower lash line really quickly. I'm just going to kind of rub this brush down here. Put on some lashes and I will be back to give you guys my final thoughts. So here are the final thoughts on the palette. Is it a good palette? Absolutely. I think the quality is very, very nice. I love that the pastels aren't too chalky and they don't blend away. That's a big thing that I find with pastels is even if you get a lot of punch and pigment, they're so chalky that when you blend and mix other colors, they lose the opacity. That's not the case with these. You can tell that these are high quality pastels. They're not going to give you bam wham pigment, which I know a lot of you asked about. They are. Sheer is a strong word, but they're not super pigmented. You know what I mean? I mean, you saw the action on my eyes. You can make your judgments on that. Is it my favorite palette from Natasha Denona? Probably not. I don't think I'm going to end up using this as much as my other palettes. I say probably because I didn't think I would end up using the Trio Chrome palette and the Circle Local palette that much either and I ended up loving those. So only time will tell if I end up feeling the same about this palette but I don't think so because I like a little bit of depth. I feel like if I want to do a colorful look I could still just climb into my Trio Chrome and Circle Loco because there still are pastel shades in those. Uh, so I don't think you know if this was the most necessary palette for me. You have to really, really like pastels to be sold on this, but if you are into pastels, I think that you will enjoy this. I enjoyed the formulas in here. I thought for being a pastel palette, it was super easy to work with. It's just a matter of if you think you're going to use it or not. I got asked about if I think that this palette would work on deeper skin tones. Obviously, I don't have experience in that. I haven't tried this on somebody with a deeper skin tone, so make sure you keep an eye out for those that do have deeper skin tones. I think it will show up. I think, you know, if you use a nice light base, you'll get them to show up. It's just a matter of if it will be flattering or not, and in some cases, I think you might just want to go for something deeper like Circle Loco or Trio Chrome, just for something more flattering. I, I think they'll show up. I really do. But again, don't quote me on that. So, Overall, I mean, I like the quality of this. I think it's good. It's not a top recommendation that I have from Natasha, but I'm going to have a lot of fun with this. It is a palette that is very spring appropriate, so I'm going to make an effort to use it. Let me know if you guys want a full dedicated multiple looks video to where I can really focus on getting pretty looks out of this one. One that I'm not so worried about testing the quality, and that way I'll be able to update you guys on my final, final thoughts. So I hope you guys enjoyed this first impressions. I appreciate you taking the time out to watch my videos and leaving me a testimonial for Sephora Squad. And with that being said, I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.